So back in April of this year, Fnatic announced a new partnership with WRC or World Rally Championship. And while we have seen quite a bit of sponsorship activity going on behind the scenes, banners at events, online activity and things like that, what we haven't seen up until now is a new product come of this relationship. So today I'm very excited to share with you the brand new CSL Elite steering wheel WRC. Now I know a lot of you are going to be thinking, wait, why are you saying brand new when this looks exactly the same as a P1? So yes, it is fundamentally based on the same design as the P1, but there are a few significant differences with this wheel, most namely in the new quick release system. Now, this is a uh, not only a new quick release system to the CSL Elite range, but a new design to Fnatic in general. And I think that this is gonna be something that we'll probably see carried forward onto some of the other wheels as well. Now, Barry from Sim Racing Garage has already done a video on this product, and he did a really fantastic job of diving into all the fine details Details, pulling it apart, showing you how everything works. And he also, I believe, has had quite a bit of hands-on time with this new quick release system as a standalone item as well. So I would definitely recommend checking out his video. Uh, yeah, he's gone into a lot of detail there and I'm sure you'll find a lot of value in that. So what I'm gonna do in today's video is just focus on the basic stuff that you guys need to know when making a decision as to whether you wanna pick up this wheel or not. So the most important thing that I wanna cover straight away before we dive into the finer details is, as you can see on the box, this is an Xbox Xbox One and Windows 10 compatible wheel. And I wanna make sure that we're very clear here on PS4 and PS5 compatibility as well, because compatibility with the PlayStation systems comes from the wheelbase. So as long as you have a PS4 or PS5 compatible wheelbase, this wheel will work for you. So just to reiterate again, even though it does say Xbox and Windows 10 compatible, on the box. It is also PS compatible, including the new PS5 if you're using it in conjunction with a PlayStation compatible wheelbase. Now, just quickly before we do get started, I'm sure the majority of you guys are well aware of this by now, but just for those who may be brand new to the channel, first of all, welcome. Secondly, this wheel was provided to us free of charge for the purpose of producing this review video, as are most of the products that we review these days here on Boosted Media. And while I'm sure Fnatic would love it if we only said nice things, the reality is that they don't put any conditions at all on what we are and are not allowed to say. So uh, yeah, obviously there are things like embargoes on when we're able to release videos, but in terms of what we're allowed to share and our opinions on the products, there's no conditions placed on that whatsoever. So just for full disclosure there. Now, if you do decide that you want to pick up one of these wheels and you love what we do here at Boosted Media, there is a really awesome way that you can help out. And that is to follow the links in the description below this video. Following those links when you make your purchase sends a small percentage of the profits from the sale back to us, which is what keeps us here running at Boosted Media. So thank you very much for the support there. But first of all, let's get started on the features of the wheel, then we can get into doing some driving. Okay, so no need to do a full unboxing in this case because there's not a whole lot inside the box. We've got the standard quick start guide as we come to expect from Fnatic, which covers all the details we need to know. And we'll take a more detailed look at this when we get onto the new quick release system in a little moment. We'll also notice some detail on the removable buttons that we'll see in a moment, the removable paddles, which we'll take a look at too, and then flip it over onto the back and some detail around calibration, different modes and button mapping as well. So all the key things that you need to know to get up and running quickly. Then in addition to the Xbox centric buttons, which are pre-installed, we also have quite a decent selection here of additional buttons that we can swap those out with. Not a massive selection, but I don't see anything obvious that's missing. Maybe a radio call button, a push to talk button might be an addition, but other than that, all the key fundamentals all seem to be there. But anyway, we'll set that aside. Now onto the wheel itself. Now I will admit to you straight off the bat, this is the most entry level wheel that I've actually tested here at Boosted Media. We started off with the um, club sport range and then moved up into the podium range and aftermarket options for the SimiCube after that. So I didn't have massively high expectations when I knew that I was gonna be getting this wheel. I thought that it might feel quite cheap in comparison to the wheels that I'm used to. And I, look, I can definitely see where they cut some costs, particularly around the plastics used in this top section here. This does look a little bit toy-like compared to what I'm used to, but otherwise the wheel actually feels very solidly constructed. There's only minimal amount of flex there at all. You can hear a little bit of creaking in the plastic around this top part, but other than that, there's not any more flex in that wheel itself than I am used to from any of the other wheels that I've used in the past, really. So 
that's quite impressive. The buttons themselves have a little bit less definition to them than what I'm used to from the Club Sport range, but nonetheless, they still have a nice tactile feel, feel to them, and you certainly don't miss when you've pressed a button, which is obviously very important. Now, just in terms of buttons, we do have seven buttons on the right-hand side here, all just momentary switches. On the left-hand side, we've got two more buttons, as well as a little LED here to indicate the mode that we're in. Four more buttons around the outside of this joystick here. Now, I'm calling it a joystick and not a uh, funky switch because it doesn't have the rotary encoder that you may be familiar with from other Fnatic devices. So up, down, left, right, and push button. But yeah, the buttons actually feel really, really nice. Now in his review, Barry said that the logos were screen printed, but having a closer look at this, if we get up really close on that detail there and have a look, that's actually the raw aluminum that you can see. Now I could be wrong about this, but what it looks to me like they've done at least is anodize the face of the brushed aluminum wheel black and then just mask off these areas where the uh, where the inscriptions are. So we've got the Fanatec logo, WRC logo, and the tie print. And yeah, those are raw brushed aluminum underneath the black. Now, if we compare that quickly to a wheel, which costs a lot more, being my Momo rally wheel, which cost more than that wheel did, even with no button box whatsoever to speak of, just the wheel itself. Exactly the same process there, the raw aluminum underneath. So yeah, overall, side by side, considering the price difference between the two and the functionality that you get with the, with the Fnatic wheel, I honestly expected that it wouldn't be as good as this. So genuine Alcantara wrapping around the wheel as well, and that feels very nice to the touch, along with this nice orange stitching around the insides. Now, just before we flip it around and have a look at the quick release and paddles, I also wanna comment on the weight of the wheel. It is extremely light, and I'm just looking at the spec sheet now, 1,092 grams, so 1.1 kilos with this simplified quick release system. Now, we'll have a look at this in more detail in just a moment, but you can also swap out the glass-infused plastic quick release system with the Club Sport quick release adapter. That adds an additional 188 grams to the weight, so it takes the total weight to 1.28 kilos. But we'll comment on the quick release in just a moment when we flip over, but yeah, very, very light wheel, and I think that's gonna be important, particularly when you consider that majority of people are gonna be running this on either a Club Sport or a CSL Elite wheelbase. Obviously every gram matters there when you've got a weaker motor system. So the lighter the wheel, the less rotating mass and the more detail you should feel in the force feedback and the less dampening effect that will occur while driving. By the same token as well, the diameter of the wheel is also very, very important. This is a 300 millimeter diameter wheel, which in my opinion at least is the ideal diameter for an all rounder wheel. It's not too narrow to sort of be too jerky and too twitchy when driving more GT style cars, rally and drifting and things like that, but it's also narrow enough that you do get that finer, you know, finesse in the steering when you're doing more formula style driving as well. So keeping in mind that, you know, for many people, this may be the only wheel that they own in conjunction with the wheelbase, might not be able to afford a formula style wheel as well as a GT style wheel. I honestly think that a 300 millimeter diameter is the perfect choice for an all rounder. So much so that I actually went and bought a 300 millimeter wheel myself just the other day. This is a Momo, uh, a Momo wheel, which cost incidentally the exact same amount just for the wheel as this entire thing costs. But we'll talk more about pricing in our conclusion section of the video, but 300 millimeters, 1.092 kilograms, really good size, really good weight for an all rounder wheel, minimizing the need for you to go out and purchase additional wheels if you can't afford them. So really good choices there in my opinion. So let's flip the wheel over now and take a look at what we have on the back here. So those who are familiar with the previous model P1 wheel, which is very similar in terms of its overall design, you'll notice a couple of things going on here that are fundamentally different. So first of all, we have removable paddles now on our shifters. So for those who are wanting to do rally style driving with an H pattern shifter, don't want your hands knocking into these when you're doing quick uh, push pulls and slides and you know slipping the wheel through your hands, things like that, you can remove these. Another reason why they've made these paddles removable as well is so that you can use them in conjunction with the Club Sport stack shifter paddles as well. So if you want to have static paddles instead of ones that rotate with the wheel, that is an option. This of course also opens the door to all sorts of aftermarket options as well. So I'm sure we'll be seeing people making carbon fiber paddles, which will reduce the weight even further. But these are aluminum, so they are quite nice and lightweight. And there's no noticeable flex there in the paddles themselves. A little bit of flex in the shifter action itself. We'll talk about the shifters in just a moment, but yeah unless you really, really bend it, and you're probably gonna break the plastic before you actually would bend that aluminum, to be honest with you. So I don't see any reason why you would need to upgrade those other than just cosmetics. But the option is, of course, there for aftermarket uh, modifications should you wish to go down that road. 
Now talking about the shifters themselves in a little bit more detail now. So Fnatic call this their snap dome system. And look, I'm actually quite impressed with the overall feel of these shifters. I actually maybe even think they feel a little bit better than the factory ones you get with the club sport. And that's saying a lot. So, I mean, the, the, the reason I say that is they've got a little bit less travel. There's a little bit of flex there in the initial bite of the switch. And you can see that's just as the switch is pulling in. But what I like about these is that it's quite a defined click. And although you do have flex at the uh, actuated and non-actuated position, there's not a whole lot of throw in that. So probably only, you know, maybe five millimeters of throw. And we mentioned this in the review of the Club Sport Magnetic Paddle Shifter module upgrade recently. One of the things I didn't like about the factory Club Sport Paddle Shifters is the fact that there's quite a bit of travel there before the micro switch actuates inside the wheel. And that kind of made it quite easy to miss shift. Whereas with these, there's very little flex there and the shift itself is very defined. So it's impossible to sort of hold it midway. It kind of it goes that tiny little bit of flex there and it's quite a defined click. So yeah, I mean, we'll comment on this a little bit more when we go for a drive, but as a first impression, I actually think I prefer these to the feeling of the factory club sport shifters, which surprises me quite a lot. They obviously don't feel as good as the magnetic paddle shifter modules or the advanced paddle module, but yeah, really quite impressive. So anyway, let's take a look at this quick release system in more detail now, because I'm sure that's what the majority of you are wondering about. And uh, no doubt the biggest change on this wheel from the previous models of the uh, P1. So when you see a big warning sticker like this, you know that it's important. So stop turning once the quick release ring completely covers the indicator line. Over tightening may result in difficulty to loosen and damage. Read quick guide instructions. So let's just have a quick look at that quick guide now. So we need to make sure, first of all, that the line is visible on the quick release when we slide the wheel onto the base. The system's a little bit different for mounting on DDs, as you'll see in a moment too. And then we turn the simplified quick release ring to the closed lock direction until the indicator line is completely covered. So we're basically screwing it and clamping it down. And then it notes here for attachment to the podium DD, you need to make sure that the locking nut on the DD side is only just snugged up against the rubber ring. So we're not gonna wanna clamp that down like we do with the club sport and podium quick releases. So essentially the way this works, we'll set that aside. We'll take this off as well. We've read the sticker, so we'll put that somewhere safe as well. So essentially what we have in, we'll have a look at the back here, a little indicator here indicating unlock and locked position. And as I mentioned before, this is a glass fiber infused plastic. So it's quite strong whilst also being lightweight. So it unscrews to a point and then stops. So you can't accidentally unscrew it all the way off. So in the unlock position, you'd slide it onto your wheelbase and then you clamp it down and the internal design is really quite simple and very similar, in fact, to the previous design that had that locking ring around the outside that you had to use a retention screw to kind of clamp down. But now instead of having that annoying clamp design that had to be tightened down with a screw every time you wanted to change wheels, you now have this collar around the outside that you tighten and you can see as we tighten that down, it only goes to a certain point as well. So you shouldn't be uh, at too much risk of over tightening, but you can see the little, uh, the little fingers or the leaves on the internal part here squished together. So it's got these little cutouts. So it's all squishes together and that takes up any slack in the mechanism. We'll comment on this again once we've got it mounted on the wheelbase on the rig a little bit later on. But you can see it's also got this little ball bearing here as well that keeps it seated in position. And that is solid in place right now. But if we loosen it off again, you'll see it then pushes in place as we squeeze it in it falls back into position again. So in theory at least, and based on what I saw in Barry's review, it does seem to do quite a good job, but obviously we'll test it out for ourselves as well and see whether we have the same results as he did. Now, another important thing that we also need to mention here as well is the fact that this quick release is interchangeable. So you can see here, we've got the one, two, three, four, five, six screws around the outside. So unlike the P1 model, we do have the option of swapping this out completely for the Club Sport quick release adapter, which is available separately from Fnatic. And I'll put a link in the description below for you guys for that as well. So literally all we need to do is just undo the one, two, three, four, five, six screws, pop this off, slide this one on and we're good to go. Now we'll test that out a little bit later on as well when we have a look at flex in the quick release to see whether there is actually any tangible difference or benefit to purchasing this separately other than cosmetics, of course. But yeah, we'll have a look at that in just a moment. But one really important thing that we do need to note here is that using this wheel on a direct drive wheelbase will limit you to low torque mode. So as if you didn't have the torque key installed in the wheelbase. So regardless of what you do with a quick release, if you do install this wheel onto a direct drive wheelbase, you will be limited to low torque mode. So take note of that. 
But anyway, let's get this guy installed over on our DD2. We'll have a quick look for any flex in the quick release system. Also compare with the Clubsport quick release adapter as well. And then go for a drive. Okay, so let's just start off by looking at how to actually install the wheel. So as we saw in the instructions, we want to wind the collar up so it's just butting up against the rubber ring here, but not actually squishing the rubber or compressing it at all. So once we've done that, we can slide the wheel on. Now, it was a little bit stiff to get on the first time, but it did loosen up a little bit after a couple of matings. So we slide it on, push it into position, and then rotate the collar to lock it in position. So having a look at the flex that we have on the wheel now. So I want you to look particularly around the area of the bolts and you can see there's quite a bit of flex there between the wheel and the quick release itself. So the majority of the flex now is coming from that area rather than where the quick release actually mates with the shaft on the DD1 or DD2. So that was particularly interesting. So I took the wheel back off again and then swapped the quick release over for the Club Sport quick release adapter. So we just undo the six bolts and it literally just slides straight off. So you can see inside here, the plastic ribbings that add a little bit of reinforcement, but that is the area that we're dealing with where that flex was present. Now you can also see the little post there up on the left-hand side. From what I understand, that's what's responsible for activating a little switch on some wheels to tell the wheelbase whether it's a uh, simplified quick release or a standard quick release that's installed. But in the case of this wheel, there is no switch there to activate. So even when we attach the Club Sport quick release, we still are limited to low torque mode. We'll talk about that a little bit later on once we go for a drive. So I'll show you now side by side in slow motion and you guys can judge for yourselves. So while the overall amount of flex that we could see between the two was quite similar, in the case of the new quick release, it was coming from the joint here and sort of flexing in this part around where the ribs are here. Whereas with the Club Sport quick release, the flex is coming from the joint here. And obviously there's no flex in this part here. So it's not so much a weakness in the plastic on this side here, so much as it is in this part here. So I'd imagine if they came up with a design using metal, pretty much the same as what Barry said in his review, to be honest with you guys. Uh, if they come up with a similar design to this, but constructed of aluminium similar to this with little cutouts in this section here so that it can cinch down with some sort of a screw mechanism, then I think that they'll be onto a winner. So to access the tuning menu on this wheel, we press the spanner button and then we can scroll up and down to choose between our five different profiles, pretty much exactly the same as we do on any other wheel. And we move from side to side to select from the tuning menu and up and down to adjust the values. You can see it also is reflected on the wheelbase as well in the case of the DD1 and DD2. But if you do want to see more information on exactly how the tuning menu system works, there's a link down in the description below for you guys, as well as at the top of the screen right now. So let's have a chat now about the driving experience with this wheel. So being such a versatile wheel, I spent a good six or seven hours putting it through its paces across a widest variety of different types of cars and sims as I could possibly think of. I know that this is the sort of wheel that a lot of people might purchase as their only wheel. So I wanted to sort of test it out in as many different scenarios as I could for you guys. So what I found was pretty much exactly what I alluded to at the start of the video. It is extremely versatile. Pretty much any type of car that you can think of, you can drive 
pretty well with this. The only, I guess, exception that I really found was in VR, sometimes I found it was a little bit hard to feel exactly where I was on the wheel, as opposed to a D-shaped wheel where you kind of have those reference points of the, where you have the reference point of the D-shape to sort of align yourself and know where you are. But aside from that, I found the round wheel really, really great to use. And I kind of expected that, uh, particularly for rally style driving and drifting, obviously the ability to slip the wheel through your hands and not have it bouncing all over the place is extremely important. So I think it was a good design choice staying with a round type wheel rather than changing to a different shape wheel for this particular edition. I did find that the 300 millimeter was a great compromise just as I expected. Even playing F1 2020, which is a game that I always play with a 270 or 280 millimeter formula style wheel, I didn't have any problems at all adapting to the 300 millimeter wheel and I didn't find it made me any slower at all. Now, another thing that I really appreciated as well when using this wheel was the layout of the buttons. Now, it might sound a little bit silly, but I know a lot of people that are looking at purchasing this wheel may not already own a handbrake or shifter and may not, you know, sort of be in the market to purchase one of those. So what I found is that this wheel was really easy to hit the LSB, LT and A and B buttons with my hands while driving. I didn't have to sort of adjust my hands on the wheel or take my eyes off the road to do that. And particularly in rally games and for drifting as well, I'm maybe a little bit embarrassed to admit, but I actually ended up mapping the B button to the handbrake. And I actually found I was able to drive better that way than with a mechanical handbrake. And obviously that's just my own lack of experience. But the point here is that if you do only have the wheelbase and the wheel and pedals, you don't have any of those other peripherals, you will find that the positioning of the buttons on this wheel is really convenient for functions like that. And in F1 2020 as well, I was able to map those buttons to functions like fuel trim, uh, ERS, DRS activation, uh, you know, all those sorts of things that you need while driving to go fast. And yeah, it was really convenient. I didn't have any problems at all. And I didn't have to take my eyes off the road to use the wheel. So yeah, I do think, I know a lot of people are gonna be critical that it is, you know, essentially the same fundamental design as the previous P1. But look, this was my first experience with that design and I was really impressed by it. I think it is also worthwhile mentioning that I never had any problems with snagging on any of the buttons or anything like that, particularly when drifting. Some of the wheels I own, if I try and drift with those, I'm often snagging my hands on, you know, rocker switches, toggle switches and things like that. So the sort of basic design of this with the buttons just far enough that you can touch them without sort of rotating your hands, but still far enough away that you don't catch them by accident as you're slipping the wheel through your hands. That was definitely something that I did appreciate while driving as well. Now the shifters, I didn't experience a single miss shift the entire time that I was using this wheel. And look, to be completely honest with you guys, I still stand by my statement after six or seven hours of driving that I actually prefer the feeling of these shifters to the ones that come standard on club sport wheels. I think that they got a little, they got a little bit less travel and a little bit more definition in the click. And while there is definitely more movement there than with magnetic shifters, the click is really well defined and I think rivals wheels that cost a lot more than this one does. So yeah, really impressed with the shifters as well. Now I know that most rally wheels do have a band around top dead center as a reference point when you're driving. And I do see the reasons why they've used that strip also as a rev light on this wheel as they did with the previous models as well. But I would really like to have seen a you know LED strip or you know a sequence of separate LEDs like what we have on the BMW GT2 wheel for example, instead of this design. I think it would have just maybe just classed it up a little bit and given people a little bit more of a reason potentially to upgrade from the P1 wheel if they already own that wheel. But ultimately, I think the main differentiating factor and talking point with this wheel is going to be the newly designed quick release. Obviously, this has been something that has been doing the rounds for a while now. A lot of people have complained about the flex that is present in the quick release system, particularly around the direct drive wheels. That seems to be where it's most noticeable to most people. And, you know, I've picked up on it and shown it in previous videos as well with all of my wheels, including, you know, the super expensive Porsche wheels and the likes of those. So, you know, that was obviously something that Fnatic did need to address. And I feel like while we still did have some flex with this wheel, that was mostly down to the plastic construction itself with this design. The flex that we were seeing was in the back of the wheel around this plastic area rather than in the actual mating point between the shaft of the motor and the uh, wheel itself. So yeah, I think that it is definitely a significant improvement over the previous simplified quick release in the fact that you don't have that screw that you're gonna lose. You don't have to deal with screwing something up and loosening it, potentially over tightening it by far. And you know, that was just, honestly, it was just a pain to work with. It made swapping wheels really, you know, not very much fun. Whereas this is very, very simple to use, very simple to put on and off. Look, to be honest with you guys, I've never really noticed the flex in the quick release systems on any of the Fnatic wheels that I own when I'm actually driving. It's only when I sort of pay attention to it and sit there and wiggle it that I notice it. 
But look, this is definitely a big step forward, I think. And, you know, if they can adapt this across to a metal design or something like that, that they can then implement on the club sport wheels as well as the podium wheels. Look, I don't really see a compelling reason other than aesthetics to upgrade this particular wheel to the club sports uh, quick release adapter. I just, I, the, you know, the overall flex, even though it was coming from a different area, was pretty much the same in terms of what you actually felt through your hands. And while it does look a lot better aesthetically than the plastic one does, you're not really looking at that when you're driving anyway. So I'd say probably not worth buying this unless you really, really want it or unless you happen to have one from another wheel that you can bring across easily. But I definitely think that it is a good step. So I am very excited to see where they go with this quick release into the future. So. The last thing to talk about, I guess, is pricing. So just looking at my cheat notes here, 199.95 euros, 199.95 US dollars as well, and 349.90 here in Australia. We always seem to get the rough end of the stick here with the conversion rate and everything. So yeah, look, I mean, I think that it is very, very good value for what it costs. I think that, you know, the feeling of the buttons, the feeling of the shifters in particular, the Alcantara wrapping, the quality of the stitching, you know, as I said at the start of the video, I was a little bit concerned that being a far more entry level wheel than what I'm used to driving day to day, I might really sort of be constantly aware of where they have cut costs. And I mean, obviously there are some areas where they have cut costs on this wheel with the, you know, the, the part at the top here in particular around the LED, I think this plastic construction is pretty tacky and I think they really could have done a better job of that. But otherwise, honestly, despite the cheaper construction, I think that they've really nailed all the things that they needed to at this price point. I think that, you know, the buttons feel good, the shifters feel good. The Alcantara wrapping is really nice. The stitching appears to be good quality. I didn't have any problems with it with the Alcantara sort of, you know, beating up or staining my hands or anything like that, which I couldn't say for some far more expensive wheels. I think the only area where I am going to be critical on this wheel is just the fact that it's not different enough from the P1. I think that, you know, for the first product that we've seen out of the partnership with WRC, even though it is a great design and, you know, if it isn't broken, don't fix it, you could say, it just would have been nice to see something a little bit different, maybe, you know, slightly different design, you know, maybe some rev LEDs or rev counters or something along here instead of the Fnatic logo. And just something to differentiate it a little bit more from the P1. The only other thing that I will call out that I was a little bit disappointed about with this wheel was just the fact that uh, you are limited to the low torque mode on the DD1 and DD2. Now, admittedly, the majority of people that are gonna be in the market for this wheel are probably gonna be using it on a CSL Elite or a Club Sport wheelbase. So I don't really think that it's gonna be a big issue in the great scheme of things, but I kind of expected that when we switched over to the Club Sport quick release, it might enable that high torque mode. But as we saw, that is not the case. But given that this wheel does have such great versatility otherwise. I'd be lying if I said that I wasn't disappointed that it is limited to low torque mode on the DD1 and DD2. I've been thinking about this a lot over the last few days and you know honestly I think due to that fact and that fact alone I think that I would definitely recommend this as a fantastic all-rounder for the Club Sport wheelbase 2.5 as well as the CSL Elite wheelbases but I think that if you have a DD1 or a DD2 the BMW GT2 wheel would probably be the one that I would recommend. It is a slightly wider diameter and that might bother some people. It's not quite so suitable for driving formula style cars for example but overall it is a nicer quality wheel. It is that little bit more expensive than this wheel is of course but it does enable the high torque mode which is going to be important. Obviously if you're driving with a DD1 and DD2 to, you want to be able to take full advantage of the torque that's available to you. So yeah, look, I probably wouldn't recommend this wheel unless you're doing exclusive rally or drifting or something like that for DD1 or DD2 owners. But if you've got a Club Sport wheelbase 2.5 or a CSL Elite wheelbase, then I do think that this is an absolutely fantastic wheel that won't disappoint you. So I think that's it for today's review, guys. If you do want to pick one of these wheels up, as I mentioned at the start of the video, we do have some links down in the description below and a small percentage of the profits from those sales come back to keeping us going here at Boosted Media. So I really appreciate your support there. But otherwise, guys, thank you very much for watching. Leave a thumbs up if you've enjoyed the video. Make sure that you are subbed. Hit the notification bell too so you don't miss future videos. And that's it. I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.